I'm just gonna take my dress off. I don't really care. Usually when I paint videos, usually when I paint, that's it, usually when I paint, I listen to YouTube videos and it's honestly just a good background noise so I figured I'd just make one of those where I'm just rambling and no one's actually paying attention to what I'm saying because it's just on in the background for noise. Unless you guys are paying attention, in which case it's not going to be that interesting. I just, well okay, he's been so much happier. I used to have him over here where this little guy is that guy's not happy but that's where he used to be and he was not happy so I put him on my desk with more sunlight so much happier and I repotted this jade plant the other day and I also repotted these little succulent guys and they're just living their best life also I just painted this little um, Galapagos penguin <laughs> I get so nervous talking on camera I don't know why because no one's actually there but I know that like eventually people are gonna see this and to me that's like public speaking and I hate public speaking. Like I'm in two online classes right now and one of them is an art course so we have a crit every week and during the crit when it's like my turn to like talk about my piece my hands are literally shaking, I'm like sweating, my voice like cracks and I'm like ah and it's just it's insane because I'm just sitting in my room, like a very comfortable place. I feel really like comfortable and safe here and I'm like freaking out because I have to like talk to people. Oh god. <laughs> I can't find it. I'm gonna work on this little guy, which to you guys you know that that's what I'm working on because you already saw some of the time lapse of me working on it and Probably the title of this video is going to have something to do with this painting, but I thought I'd introduce it anyways. It sucks because I like to listen to music when I paint and I'm okay, it doesn't suck. I'm literally doing this to myself. If it really sucked that bad, I would just not, but 
Um, I do like to listen to music while I paint, and now I can't because I've got you guys here with me. I'm not really sure what to talk about. I guess I'm just gonna like talk about my life, what's going on with me, because I know you guys are all really interested. Tomorrow I'm going swimming. That's fun. Although it's been like kind of cold the past couple days, so I'm really hoping that tomorrow warms up. When we made the plans, my phone said that Wednesday was supposed to be like really hot. And now it doesn't say that. It's like lowered like six degrees. So I'm hoping that it doesn't get into the 70s because that would just be really cold for me to swim. But I don't know. It does get pretty warm during the day. So like I'll suck it up. It'll be fine. Oh, exciting news. Um, This Saturday, yep, Saturday. I am going with my roommate, her uncle, and his girlfriend, and we are going to Ocean City, Maryland. And I've never been in the ocean, so I am like so excited. There you go. Um, yeah, so I've never been in the ocean, and I think I went like once when I was little, because I do remember like complaining about like how salty it was in my mouth, but I was also afraid of swimming in water when I was little because I just did not know how to swim. So I definitely have not actually been in the ocean, I guess you could say. I don't know, but I've had many a dreams where I'm like just diving into a giant wave in the ocean and I'm just so excited for that to finally come true. Hopefully, I hope beaches are open. I don't actually know if they're open or not. And don't worry, we're definitely gonna be like social, oh my God. we're definitely gonna be like social distancing. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. That's like been the highlight of my past couple weeks. I haven't really been doing much else. I came up with this concept because um, my roommate and our friend that lives down the street, almost every day, every other day, we go into the park and we just like sit there for an hour or five, depends how we're feeling that day. And um, there's so many just like little bugs that just appear and they're so cute. And I don't know, I spend a lot of time just like looking at the grass and just watching the ants and just like, I don't know, just watching what they're doing. We really don't do much in the park, um, but it's really good for like observing. And so I kind of just was like a little Sunday in the park, I guess, I don't know. Just like, what are the ants experiencing? You know, is this what it looks like to them? I just wanted to create a little like, a, like fantasy world. I don't know, of what they might be like experiencing. Also, I just think it's really cute. I'm gonna add like little ants and everything marching and the little mouse like popping out from between the grass. I haven't decided if I wanted to call it like Sunday in the park, because I started it on a Sunday while I was in the park, or if I wanted to call it between the weeds, but you guys will probably know before I do. But yesterday my roommate and I watched, it's a French movie on Netflix and it's called Portrait of a Lady on Fire, I believe. And it's like an art movie. Um, and it was so good. It was really sad. So just if you're gonna watch it like, I mean, it's not super sad, but it's just, it's kind of depressing at the end. Um, but it was really good. There was one scene where they like do these drugs together, but they put the drugs on their armpits. And I tried like looking up what these drugs were. And I just couldn't find anything. The director was like, we had this idea for the scene. So it's like a very sexual scene. Um, they were like, I had this idea for this scene for a while. Um, honestly, before I even knew what drug we were gonna use, but they never explain what drug they used. And I'm just so confused, set in like the 1700s, so I don't know if that was actually something that they had access to and something that they did back in the day, or if um, the director just made it up for this film. But either way, I was intrigued by it. The girl's pupils were just the size of like her iris, like her eyes just turned black. And I was like, oh my God. But she was fine, I was worried. I was like, did she die? Like what, what, what went on there? I'm not really sure what's going on, but she was, she was fine. 
We've also been watching this show called um, Sweet Magnolias on Netflix, and it's got Jamie Lynn in it. That's her name, right? The girl, it's the girl from Zoe 101, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Jamie Lynn Spears, I think. Um, it's like an all right show. It's cute. We've watched, I'm pretty sure we watched the last episode last night. There might be one more. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, like, you know how, like, when you're with your friends and then someone does something, like, stupid and you're like, we should have a TV show about us. It kind of feels like they said that and then they actually got a TV show made about them. Like, a lot of the things that go on that are, like, the real dramas of the show are just normal things, which is nice because it's, like, it's good to have shows that you can relate to, but some of the things they just like add the dramatic music in the background or like they have the actress start crying and it's just not that serious like of a reason to be that upset for i feel i don't know that's just my opinion on it but it's definitely been a cute show and i've enjoyed watching it it's just like light entertainment at night um we did watch Sorry, this is turning into just shows that I've watched because I've literally done nothing else with my life during quarantine. Um, I also never watch shows, but since quarantine, I've had like nothing else to do, so that's what we've been doing. Um, so we watched The Ozarks, and that is a phenomenal show. I definitely recommend that if you guys have not watched that yet. Um, it's this man, uh, what's his name? Marty Bird and his family and they have to launder money for a drug cartel, a Mexican drug cartel and I won't say too much else about it because I don't want to like spoil it but they have to go to the Ozarks so he can do that um, and it's just a really good show and I highly highly recommend it. I am in a, so I mentioned that, so I'm taking two summer courses right now and um, one of them is evolutionary psychology and I'm actually an evolutionary studies minor. I'm also the president of the evolutionary studies club, but there's like 10 on a good day of us in that club, so it's nothing, nothing too exciting. Um, but I do really love the club and I'm really glad that I'm a part of it. But um, yeah, so I'm in evolutionary psychology right now just to like finish up my minor. And that class is just so interesting. We were talking about um one of the sections is on like parenting and stuff and one of the concepts they talk about is allo parenting some cultures still today do this where you have someone that's outside of your nuclear family so like not your mom or dad um so it could be like a grandparent or aunt uncle anybody and they help raise the child um and so i was thinking of that concept and how that's not really seen that much in western society today and I was thinking, I wonder if that could be a reason, because we were also talking about attachment theory. Um, so I was wondering if that could be a reason that causes like insecure attachment. Because if you think about it, kids nowadays tend to, uh, like sometimes, yes, if you live close to family, you'll have um, grandparents watch you or like aunts, uncles. But usually what a lot of families do is they get babysitters who the kid has never met and sometimes you're going through multiple different babysitters because you can't book the same one all the time or if it's somebody in college you'll have them for a summer and then they go away for like the school year so you're constantly getting new people and so i was wondering if maybe that could be a cause of like increased anxiety that we see today um also though there's a chance that anxiety has always been this prominent and we've just never really classified it or like been able to like study it or anything so it just hasn't been as well known also mental health hasn't always been the most important thing in people's eyes so i don't know if this theory is even correct but i was thinking you know this kid if they're used to seeing especially if it's someone related to you you kind of get like that sense even as a child that like you know you're related to them so if you're always having your aunt or uncle or like grandma take care of you when your mom's not there it's still somebody that is related to you and you know like they want the best for you and everything and you just feel like safe with them but if you're having these babysitters that come once or twice or i don't know just for like a summer and then they leave and you get someone else you never form a real attachment with them so you never feel fully safe around them 
Um, and so I don't know, I was thinking like that could be a possible reason for anxiety and insecure attachment because you just never were able to form that healthy attachment style. I don't know if that's true. I don't even know if you'd be able to like test that. Um, but I definitely thought that that was like an interesting viewpoint of it. Something else that we were um, just talking about was art and evolution. And that one I found pretty interesting. And one of the things, one of the studies they did, which I actually found kind of opposite of what I would have thought, is they put women into the study and they showed them two men. And one of them was an amazing artist, but he just never got a break at it. And he was like the typical struggling artist. He just was not making good living, but he was very, very talented. And the other man, very poor artist, not very talented, but he got a lucky break and he's making really good money from it. Um, and then they had the women rate these two men on attractiveness. And now what I would have thought was, oh, they also looked at the women based on their, um, like where they were in their ovulation cycle. So I would have thought the women ovulating, because that means that you're able to get pregnant, would have found the, um, the more well-off man more attractive because he would have been better able to like take care of their young. And that's just kind of the way things tend to go. But what they actually found was women ovulating found the art, like the artist who was very talented, much more attractive than the man who was more financially stable. What they were saying was the man who was a really good artist has talent and so she knows like he's got good genes, he would be able to pass on that talent and those good genes to our offspring, which that does make sense. Hey guys, this is Editor Jill. Um, I'm just going through the footage and I realized that what I said about evolution might be taken the wrong way because I know evolution when it's applied to humans can be really controversial. So I just wanted to start off by saying that I, one, by no means think that a woman needs a man to care for their young. That wasn't what I was trying to say, or even what the study was trying to say. Um, and two, I wanted to point out that these, the particular study that I was explaining, the researchers were looking at people who identified as either a heterosexual male or heterosexual female. So I hope that I don't offend anybody. That wasn't my reasoning for that. It was just a study that I found rather interesting because it went kind of opposite of what I might have thought. Um, but yeah, anyways, back to your regular scheduled program. Something that the article said that I did not agree with was, um, they said that art basically has no use in terms of like survival. And the only reason I don't agree with this is because if you think back to cave paintings and everything, that was a way that they would, well, I guess we aren't sure, but it is hypothesized that that is a way that they would teach people about say different species like stay away from these types of animals you know they do the cave paintings and drawings and stuff um and then also if you even think of maps you know maps are a great resource for knowing where things are modes of survival and then there's also if you think more currently how we have a lot of studies of different plants and everything you know they could have drawn plants and said because women would talk and they would help you know, they were the gatherers, they were the communicators, they pass on stories, and they could tell each other, like, this is a painting or a drawing of, like, this certain plant that made this person very sick. Stay away from this plant. Um, also, they just help, art helps preserve history when before they had cameras and even, like, a written language, there was art. And, you know, some language back with, like, our ancestors in the more, like, primatal stage or primordial stage um they would use like symbols as art or sorry they would use symbols as language and i don't know i just feel like that argument wasn't very well backed like they they kind of just said that statement and then just moved on and i was just like um i don't know if i fully agree with that because art can definitely be used for survival obviously it's not a weapon that's going to help you if you're literally being attacked but it is something that Without it, we would have struggled a lot more to survive. Um, but yeah, that's just like my two cents on that argument. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or if you guys have completely just zoned out and are not even paying attention to my rant about um, evolution. <laughs> it's probably the case because literally none of my friends listen to me talk about evolution. It's really a great time. 
Hey guys, I'm currently visiting home, which is why I'm in like a living room right now. Um, I just realized that as I was going through the footage, I never did like a little outro goodbye. Um, so thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see the finished piece, you can find it on my Instagram, which I'll link below. And yeah, this is Milo. He's so cute. <laughs> okay, that was, that was nice. All the puppies. All right. Bye guys.